Hi students. Uh, this under algebra number theory in unit 2 finite fields and polynomials. We are in the topic called as finite fields. There are a lot of applications of finite fields which we see in computer science and uh, IT. Okay, let's get into the PPT. So let's have the outline. So first we'll start with the introduction and then we move on to the applications of finite fields. Where are these finite fields applied? And go back with basic concepts and statements of few theorems. So here in this PPT we don't have any problems to be discussed. We will be discussing few theorems. So let's start with the introduction of finite fields. Any non-constant polynomial over a field can be expressed as a product of irreducible polynomials. Right? So any non-constant polynomial. So non-constant polynomials means you know what is non-constant polynomial. So non-constant polynomial can be expressed as a product of irreducible polynomials. So Breklam's algorithm is applied for small finite fields whereas Zehner's algorithm for the large finite fields. As a result of applications in a wide variety of areas, finite fields are increasingly important in several areas of mathematics including linear and abstract algebra, number theory and algebraic geometry as well as in computer science, statistics, information theory and engineering. That is why I highlighted this computer science and information theory. Many used to ask me why do we, why we CSE and IT students uh, study maths in the fifth semester. Okay, whereas all other branches have already completed their mathematics paper in the second year itself. See, you people are so special. That's why they get maths in the fifth semester. Jokes apart, there are a lot of applications over here. That is why they have introduced algebra and number theory for your curriculum. Now applications. So what are the basic applications of these finite fields? The factorization of these polynomials, as I told you, these polynomials can be considered whenever you have curve equations, right? Wherever you see curves, I hope everyone remembers the first image what I posted to you was the image of a roller coaster. So likewise, whenever you see chains, etc., you remember the polynomials. So when you want to factorize these polynomials over finite fields, have great importance in coding theory, combinatorial design, and quantum error. Now, this finite field was developed by Galios. So, Galios theory is also used in cryptography. I hope everyone knows what is cryptography. Okay. So, here there are a lot of applications from the finite field. Even the previous days, years back, we had CD and DVD players using computation in Galois speed as do so many disk storage system. Wherever you store things in disk, so those, their computation using Galois speed. Now let's move on to the concepts. So these concepts are very essential. So you should understand what is a field first. Okay. So what is a field? F plus and dot. There are two binary operations, addition and multiplication. Is a set F together with two binary operations, plus and multiplication, satisfying two conditions. The first is F is in abelian group with respect to plus and dot. So what is an abelian group? I guess every one by this time you should know what is a group. It is a set, finite set or whatever it may be. It will be satisfying four properties. Along with that, if commutative property is also included, then I can call it as an abelian group. So, it should be an abelian group for both plus and dot. Number second condition, the distributive law holds for all A, B, C which belongs to F. That is A. What is distributive law? We are distributing something. So, here dot is distributed over plus. So, A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. These things you should have studied, you know, discrete mathematics. 
and b plus c dot c is equal to b dot c from my right side operator. Right distributive law, left distributive law. So b dot c plus c dot f. This is what is a field is. So field is a set f having two binary operations plus and dot satisfying the two conditions. One, it should be the abelian group under both the binary operation. And second one, it should also satisfy the distributive law, the left and the right. Now, next definition, finite fields. Okay. So, you should understand what is a field and then we'll come to a finite field. A field which has finite elements, very simple. By the word you say, when you look at the word, it describes what? Finite. So, when I say it's finite, countable. So, countable elements in the set, in the field, then I can say it's a finite element, finite field. So, finite fields can also be called as Galois fields. So, remember, there's another name for finite fields, Galois fields. So, now, F7 means the order of the field is 7. Okay, order, what is order? Order is number of elements. There is a very famous theorem saying that the order of a subgroup divides the order of a group. Can you name the theorem? It is, it was in the, what, where, discrete mathematics in the previous unit also. So, F7, so if I say F7, which means 7 elements are there in that F, clear. So, the this denotes the number of elements there, same as what we have studied in Z6, Z7, that's why we keep, keep on telling, kept on telling Z6 was a field, Z6 was a field, where you have finite elements there. F7 means the order. Number of elements of the field is 7. What is the smallest field? The smallest field is F2. It can contain 2 elements. Why it should contain 2 Why can't I consider F1? Another question may arise. Why can't I say F1 is smallest? F1 means what? There is only 1 element will be considered. Only 1 element means 0. So, if I say only 0, it can be satisfying plus not multiplication. So, I should need, I need 1 also. So, 0 and 1 is needed to say f of 2 is an abelian group under plus and dot. That is why f2 is the smallest field. Okay. Now, here I have few statement of the theorems. One or two theorems I will be uh, discussing in the uh, later, uh, later slides of uh, the PPT. Now, just these theorems have to be studied. So, theorem 1. If f is a field, then prove that f of x is an integral domain and not a field. This is one theorem. So, f is a field, prove that f of x is an integral domain, f of x is not a field. Theorem 2. If f of f comma plus comma dot is a field, then character of f is greater than 0, then prove that character of f must be prime. Theorem 3, if f of x belongs to capital F of x, has degree n greater than or equal to 1, then prove that f of x is at most n roots in f. This was discussed in your first presentation where you found out about the degree. That's why I have introduced this theorem earlier. Theorem number 4, prove that a finite field has order p power t, where p is the prime and t belongs to z of Z plus this is a very important theorem. It's a lengthy, lengthy one. We'll discuss this in the Google Meet. Theorem 4. If F is a field, then prove that F of X is an Euclidean ring. So, see, we have started with what is a field, what is a finite field, and then we have discussed what is Euclidean ring, okay, etc. So, theorem 5. If F is a field, then prove that F of X is a principal ideal domain. Then, if R is an integral domain, then prove that R of X is also an integral domain. So, here are a few results. R of X is a ring of polynomials over R. This was earlier mentioned to you. That is a ring of polynomials with coefficients in R. That is what the meaning is. So, if I say R is a ring, what is R of X? It is a ring of polynomials where the coefficients are in R. If R is commutative, then R of X is also commutative. 
if r is occurring with identity 1 then r of x is also an identity with 1 so these are very important results theorem let r be a ring then r of x plus dot is a ring if r is a ring then this is also a ring if f is a field f of x is a integral domain if r is an integral domain then the degree of f of x into g of x is equal to degree of f of x plus degree of g of x so definition what is the ideal of a ring let r be a ring what is ring ring is a set which satisfies two binary operation so r is a ring a non empty set i of r we take a non empty set i of r is said to be self ideal let sorry left ideal of r if there are two conditions for left ideal and two conditions for right ideal one is, is i is a proof under addition this is i i is a subgroup under addition that is ab belongs to i which implies a minus b belongs to i and ra belongs to i for all r belongs to r capital r and a belongs to i is called the left ideal now i is called the right ideal of r is the same thing the right i is a subgroup under addition where a comma b belongs to i which implies a minus b is equal to uh, belongs to i for left ideal i had taken r a for right ideal i'll be taking a r belongs to i for all r belongs to a capital r and a belongs to i i is called ideal of r if i is both left ideal and right ideal so results let r be a commutative ring then ar is equal to ra that is left ideal and is equal to right ideal is an ideal then it is called the principal ideal generated by a and is denoted by capital a able to understand so r is a commutative ring so when these two are equal then we call it as an ideal next an integral domain capital r an integral domain capital r is said to be principal ideal domain if every ideal of r is the principal ideal So now let's have a look at the theorem. Show that the field cannot have any proper ideal. Let I be capital I be an ideal of F, and suppose I is not equal to zero. So to prove I is equal to F, since I is an ideal of F, then this I belongs to capital F or F. I is a subset of this F. F is a field. Okay, F is a field. From there, you are going to take that I ideal. Since I is not equal to zero, there exists an element A belongs to I such that A is not equal to zero. Since F is a field, it has a multiplicative inverse. Okay, so multiplicative inverse, A inverse belongs to it. So multiplicative in the sense because how can I say multiplicative inverse? As I told you, what is my what is field? The first uh, few uh, introduction slides I had told you. So field is a set, okay? So which uh, operates on two binary operations plus and dot. So there definitely you will be uh, having a multiplicative inverse. So now a belongs to i and a inverse belongs to f, which implies a into a inverse is equal to one identity element, which belongs to i. So, which implies i one belongs to capital I and one into x so belongs to i for all x of belongs to f. The x belongs to i for all x f belongs to capital. Therefore, f is a subset of i. Hence, from the first equation, this is the first equation, and this is the second equation. Second equation. So, hence one and two i is contained in f. F is contained in i. So, clearly, I can say. I is equal to f. Therefore, f cannot be any, could not have any proper ideal. So, next theorem. This is one of the theorem which I mentioned in my uh, previous slides. If R is an integral domain, then degree of f of x into g of x is equal to degree of f of x plus degree of g of x. So, proof. Let R be an integral domain. Then R is a commutative ring with identity and without zero divisors. A not equal to zero, B not equal to zero, but the product is not equal to zero. F of x. So what do I do? I consider two polynomials here. Okay. 
So you know what is the general format of a polynomial? So f of x and g of x. f of x is equal to a naught plus a one x plus a two x square plus one a n x bar n, where a n is not equal to zero. So degree of f of x is equal to n. So what is i's degree here? A. So let's consider g of x as a second polynomial, stating it as b naught plus b one x plus b two x square, and so on b m. And b m is not equal to zero, and the degree of g of x is equal to n. Now, since R is an integral domain, the product of these two polynomials is not equal to zero. So, f of x and g of x. I'm writing these two as a combined term as c naught, c one plus c two, and so on. Where c of n plus n is equal to b n, b m, and a n, which is not equal to zero. So, which means degree of f of x and g of x is equal to n plus n. So, n is nothing but degree of f of x and degree of g of x. Show that a field cannot have any proper ideal. 